Oh, hey guys. So, I was just reading this B&H catalog upside down. Uh, but anyways, today is the very first Lightroom video with a face cam, for better or worse. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna stay back a little bit, but I'm gonna try to edit this raw file right here, a picture of a very gloomy and dark ship that's stranded on a coast in Scotland. And I still want to keep that mood and just make the overall picture even better, but let's just see and jump right into Lightroom. Alright, so you guys know I love to raise the shadows as well as bring down the highlights by a lot and already we have so much detail everywhere, which is a great starting point to start off with. However, now I want to bring down the blacks, bring up the contrast, also bring in some clarity in there and even though I want to keep this entire picture relatively gloomy and dark, I still want to bring in some whites because the whites give a lot of dynamic into the picture. So then I might even decrease the exposure and a thing that you can do is just raise the white so you still have some dynamic, but just decrease the exposure if you want to go for a dark and gloomy look. So that's a really nice way how this can work together. Now, furthermore, I want to adjust the blues here, because as you can see, it is very blue in fact, and I could make it a little bit more warm, more neutral, but I really love this blue, because it works so well with the snow in the background, and it's just a very... It, it helps the atmosphere, you know, sometimes you don't want to go for a neutral color or what it actually look like, at least I don't, but rather go with what enhances the mood. This might be very warm colors at a sunset location, or maybe a very cool look if you have snow and winter and kind of a barren ship. So I'm gonna go here and just fine tune the blue tones, not necessarily go too crazy more into them and then also adjust some of the tint here. Then let's go straight away into the tonal curve, and the tonal curve is great for fine-tuning all of these shadows and these bright parts even further than you've done with the basics. So let's get started here with the highlights. Now usually I will probably bring them up, and I'm even gonna do that right here, although I don't want to go too far because you know, you can add a lot of dynamic, but here I really want it to be still kind of dark and gloomy. And the same thing with the lights, maybe even bring that down a bit. And then with the darks, you know, it's always kind of tough. I like to actually bring down the dark slider right here. And then in exchange, bring up the shadows. So now what we have is a pretty overall picture, at least what it's gonna look like in terms of the shadows and stuff in the center. Alright, now let's go into the split toning right away actually. And I wanna just play around with what I could add here in the highlights. And I believe, yeah, maybe even... Maybe even some warm tones, very close to the purplish tones, something like that. And then really just add a hint, like 10, 13, 15%. And that's already all I'm gonna do in the highlights. However, with the shadows, I might actually go for kind of a light bluish look, because it looks very cinematic that way. Yeah, again, just about 10%, nothing crazy at all. And this is from before the split toning, here's after. Not much, but it does help the entire mood. Now, what I'm gonna do afterwards is just go into the effects, add some vignetting here, actually add quite a lot of vignetting. I really think, you know, if you have a very dark and gloomy picture, then adding vignetting can really help to emphasize this entire mood, because especially here, this is the perfect example. The main interest part is kind of the ship and this uh, mountain right here. So we, if you have dark corners, we're not gonna lose anything. So as long as you make it seem natural-ish, then it will still be a great benefit to the picture and actually help the entire mood much more. As you can see from before any... And after, it has a huge difference in the perception of the whole darkness and dramaticness. 
Now what I'm gonna do furthermore is go into the local adjustments. Now I have skipped a lot of the lo global adjustments here, especially sharpening and lens corrections, which I would recommend you to do, but these are just kind of fit boring technical things that don't really matter too much in the entire look of the picture, but rather about the quality and detail and, you know, that kind of stuff. But let's go into the gradient filters here, and I really want to make this bottom even darker. So let's try that. Don't need to decrease the saturation, I don't think. And maybe even add another one over the very bottom here. Even go further into the minus exposure for the very bottom. And let's just see, making the left part a little bit brighter in the sky here. And this is a thing that I really love to do, is just make one side of the sky a bit brighter than the right. And if you do that additionally with the graduated filters in both ends, then you can really have a lot more complexity and add so much more interest in the lighting. So let's see here, just a bit into the plus exposure a little bit of plus whites as well. And this really doesn't have to be crazy, you know, just about 23, you know, a fifth of a stop, as well as some um, whites is already enough. And then on the right, I'm gonna do the same thing, just instead with the minus exposure. So I'm gonna go a bit into the minus exposure here, actually not move any other slider, and already from before any of these graduated filters looks very flat and, you know, very even overall, which is not necessarily a good thing. Afterwards, it really emphasizes the sky, the bottom isn't as emphasized, and the entire lighting scheme really goes from left to right. So furthermore, after all of that, I think I'm gonna go to the radial filters. And the radial filters are really great for, well, I'm sure you've guessed it already if you've watched my videos a little bit, for dodge and burning. So dodge and burning is making individual parts either darker or brighter. And if you just add a little bit of plus exposure, in this case, I'm also gonna make some whites in there and perhaps even just a hint of warmth in the color temperature. And I'm just gonna go over some of these spots here, right click duplicate. And again, I really don't wanna give up too much shadowness, darkness, because if I wanna make everything of this ship, everything on the below the ship very bright and have a lot of detail in it, then it won't really work with this overall very gloomy mood. So you always want to use it accordingly, want to make sure that it still looks good, doesn't look overdone, as you can see, like that. You don't want to do that, but just a little bit can always work. Then right-click duplicate, see where it can work, maybe in the sky even. And, you know, after doing it for a few times with a couple of different pictures, then you will really get the hang of it and know where it will work, where it will not work. And afterwards, you can even add some minus exposure over some parts that you want to be dark. Because you don't necessarily just want to make everything bright. You might also want to have some spots very dark to add to the entire, you know, darkness and dramaticness of the picture. So let's just finish that up here. Maybe a last darkness filter on the beach right there. And with that being said, yeah, I think that's pretty much the entire picture. So let's go into the history and see where we started out with with the raw file. Now this is the raw file and I, like a lot of times I will take a raw file that is honestly pretty bad and it will make it a lot better but it will still not be quite that great because it was bad at the beginning. And I really think this is a pretty good raw file. And as you can see afterwards, the picture looks very different, but in its essence, it is still pretty much the same. It is still very dark. It has the core attributes of the raw file, which is dark, gloomy, dramatic, cool, cold, and it just feels like it's barren and wasted and old. And afterwards, it looks very different again, 
but it's just much more emphasized on all of these aspects. And I truly think that a lot of these tutorials that I make, I really just show the capabilities of Lightroom, show the capabilities of a raw file. But this is a really great example, at least in my opinion, of what you can do with a good raw file to make an even better picture at the end. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much been it for today. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully my face didn't traumatize. Oh, let's go back. Didn't traumatize you too much. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of my face cam in Lightroom videos. Uh, if not, also let me know. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye. Man, ending videos is always weird, you know? I should just cut it to black. Oh, hey guys! I did see- oh god. No. Is it- Oh god, dude.